Should you rent or should you buy while here in Ghana? This is something that you really need to consider. So grab your popcorn and let's talk about the difference. What's up, y'all? This is your girl, TC, and I want to talk to you about renting versus buying in Ghana. Over the past few months, I've had people inbox me and say that they want to move here to Ghana and they're thinking about renting for about two years until they make a decision where they want to live. And I've also had a couple of people ask me about buying a house in Ghana and the actual expenses for it. So I'm going to try to break it down as much as I can. A lot of y'all know I haven't been here that long, so I'm just going to base this off of my experience since I've been here. So one of the main questions that people are asking me is how much money do you need to move? That's a very loaded question and that's very hard to answer because trying to tell somebody how much money they need to move is really trying to get into their business. And as a financial analyst, there's a lot of things that you have to consider as far as the person's habits, um, if you're an empty nester or if you have kids, if you do have kids, what's your family size? And also you need to think about if you have your parents living with you or if you're deciding to move here to Ghana, if you are bringing other family members here with you. Once you figure out the family size, the next thing that you need to think about is location, location, location. Just like in America, you need to think about if you want to stay in the city or if you decide that you want to move out into the quote unquote country. When you decide to move further out, then you won't have access to a lot more things, which is why a lot of people who live 35, 45, 50 plus minutes out, they have to come to a cross. So yes, you will be able to find cheaper homes outside the city, but also you need to think about the vehicle and the wear and tear with you going back and forth, maybe on a daily basis or multiple times a week on coming in, getting food. Um, if wherever you choose to live may not even have a supermarket. One of the things that I do like about here in Ghana is you can either rent or buy an apartment just like you can rent or buy a house. But there are many different ways that you can rent here in Ghana. You can rent through an Airbnb. Also, they have booking agencies here that you can um, that you can rent as well. Also, you can rent through an apartment complex and you can still do negotiations here. I know a lot of people talk about two year terms or one year terms, but you can also negotiate if you want to go, if you want to do three months, if you want to do six months, are you staying further out of a crawl because you want to see the countryside? You really want to soak in Ghana, but after a certain amount of time of being out, you may want to go ahead and come back into the city or reverse that. You know, do you want to rent someplace in the city until you make a decision how far out you want to go and the living expenses and how much you may or may not like the houses when you start moving outside the city? And while you're in negotiations, really think about your intentions on being in that rental property and how long you want to be there and maybe just jot down a list of things that you want to do because you may be there for six months and decide, okay, being in the city is not for me or being this further out is for me, but you won't be locked in for two years. So do something when you decide that you want to move or leave someplace, make sure that you do it. What's best for you. Don't listen to anyone else. Make sure that you listen to yourself because only you know your finances and only you know how far out that you're willing to drive. Also, I highly suggest that whatever you pay for, pay for it when you get here in regards to the rental property, because a lot of places here use stock photos. So I would really hate for you to say, oh yeah, well, this place looks great, it's modernized, it looked like it's more of a, of a Western culture with a washer and dryer and just the layout and come to find out you get there and that's not the case at all, but they have your money and now you're locked in for two years. Now this is one topic you're probably gonna hear me say for maybe the remaining of my videos is negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. If you do not like negotiating, if it makes you real raw on the inside, maybe see if you can get with a Ghanaian or get with someone here 
that can help you negotiate. Do not put yourself in a situation that you're not comfortable just because you want to say okay and get it over with. And now you're having to pay for something that's extremely expensive or you're paying for something that you really don't even like. Also for people who have small children or children under the age of 18, one of the things that you may need to consider as well is are they going to go to a government school or are they going to go to a private school? How far away are you going to live from that school? Because I believe they don't have any school buses here. My husband and I are empty nesters. So unfortunately I can't talk on it. I can talk more so on the empty nester aspect because we don't have to worry about any younger kids, but we do know with the government schools here, the girls do have to cut off their hair, which is funny because I really thought that African women could not grow hair. I did not know it was because when you go to a government school or a quote unquote public school that they have, that they make you cut your hair short. So with cutting your hair short for a long period of time, a lot of women are just like, just might as well just keep it off. I see more women here with either low haircuts, or a high top fade, or it's just buzzed off because that's something that they're used to. So make sure that you do a lot of research in regards to the kids and the school that they need, the, that you want them to go to, and also the rules and regulations to make sure that you can accommodate that, or if that's something that you don't wanna do at all. When living outside of America, there are a lot of countries that are more cash-based than credit-based, and it actually feels good not to be worried about your debt to credit ratio. If I have this on my credit, then I won't get approved for this. Or if my credit score is this low, then I know I can't get approved for that. Here in Ghana is more so about how much money you have in a bank. If you have more money in the bank, then that's less money you have to put down. And then they talk more about, you know, payment plans. You put the, uh, you do the payments at the bank. It's a lot less red tape here in Ghana than it is in America. And that's one of the things I really do like about here. And here in Ghana, they don't have 20 to 30 year loans. They don't have all the red tape. You know, once you pay off the property, the property is yours. Uh, unlike in America, when you have to pay property tax every single year up until the day you die, because technically the land is never yours. The house is yours once you pay off the house, but you pay property tax on the land, which will never be yours. But here in Ghana, once you pay for everything, that's that's done once you pay for the land the land is yours when buying from a home there's four things i want you to consider because i know it's very overwhelming when you're doing research on buying land in ghana and you see these two hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes and also you see fifty thousand dollar homes so when i started looking into what i wanted to buy i saw that there were four levels into this and the first level is just buying land itself you don't have a home it's pretty much just virgin land that will be the cheapest way to go the second level is land plus a shell of a home what i mean by shell of a home is just the building is up but there aren't any type of amenities in it at all. You would have to purchase that yourself. But the good thing about purchasing it yourself is you know what you're getting into. You know what, what you're buying. And also, you know the quality of the amenities that you've bought for. The second to the highest is a home with some amenities, meaning the washer, AC unit, there's already a kitchen set. The good thing about those homes is all you have to do is just buy some furniture, buy a TV, and you're able to move in with no problem. But in my opinion, the downside is you don't know the quality of the work that they've done or even the quality of the appliances that they put in. You may not even like it. For example, I love a top loader with an agitator. Now you can find those here in Ghana, but those are really few and far in between because they normally love front loaders. So if you go someplace and they already have a front loader put in, but you actually like a top loader with an agitator, then that's more money you're going to have to pay to get that front loader taken out and getting a top loader put in. Now the most expensive is the home with all the amenities. It's fully furnished. All you have to do is just get off the plane, get to your place, and that's it. 
Those are the homes that I see a lot when I do research. Those are the homes here that cost $200,000, $300,000. And if y'all are those people that, that those are the type of homes that you're looking for. And they're, they're also modernized too, you know, good. You know, I, I hope that you find the home that you're looking for, but me, I'm cheap. I'm cheap as hell. So I end up doing the land with the shell of a home because at least that way I can control my money a little bit more. One of the most important things here in Ghana is you have to have people on your team. And thanks to Certified Africa, yes, we're still in contact with them because without them, we wouldn't have a lot of the things that we have now. They helped us on both of the properties. They helped us find the location. They knew what we liked. They knew what we wanted. They knew that we were city people. They also helped us with our current three-year plan and also our future plan, which is one of the reasons why we bought two properties. Once we get older, will we want to live in a city? Probably not. We old. We want to be someplace where it's quiet. So moving out to Kaswa will be will be best. Whereas now we currently want to live in the city. So when you have a good group of people on your team that's helping you out, and companies like Certified Africa can definitely make things a whole lot easier. Which is also one of the main reasons why we didn't have to go through a bank because speaking with them and them helping us out with negotiations they helped us realize when it comes to our finances what we can afford and also what we cannot afford when coming here to ghana my husband and i made the decision that we would try our best to remain debt free so even though we have the land in kaswa and also in uh here in accra the land is paid for the property is paid for so we're making sure that we don't have any type of debt because coming here to Ghana, we, we don't want to have the worries that we had in America on paying for a mortgage and paying for just that whole Bob Dabalina type of mindset. We, we really did want to get rid of that mindset here. So make sure when you come here, make sure you come here with a plan and make sure that you pace yourself in regards to what you think is best for you and your significant other or what's best for you and your family. Now they have different types of banks here. They have banks uh, that are from Nigeria. They also have Ghana banks. But for me, I want my money where it's FDIC insured so that anything happens to my money that I know that I'm gonna get my money back. I don't have the confidence yet when it comes to the banks here in Ghana, maybe later, or if they have some type of insurance um, for the money that we're giving, maybe that's something that, um, that we'll probably do in the future. One of the things I am going to say over and over and over again is I highly, highly, highly suggest you go visit the country that you want to move to so you can understand the currency, you can understand the lifestyle. And also if you even see that that's a place that you want to live. I see a lot of people ask, where do you think I should live? Where do you think I should live? Man, I don't know. I cannot tell you where I think you should be. When you start asking other people on what you should do in regards to your business, then that's going to make you highly upset that you uproot your whole life. Now, I can understand people asking about the quality of living. What is there to do? Also, as far as education, but I've literally seen people ask where they should live and people are telling them where they should live and these people go there and now they get there and they're upset they don't understand the currency they feel like people are rude they're used to certain things at a certain time and it takes longer than usual stop asking people what's best for you only you know what's best for you and only you know what you like what you do not like what you will tolerate and what you will not tolerate. Why are you trying to figure out where you're going to expat shoe? Make this a nice little adventure. Try to go to different places. In Africa, there are 54 countries in Africa. Remember, Africa is a continent, not a country. There are so many places just to visit in Africa alone. Also, the UK, China, ugh, 
Australia, you know, Antarctica, whatever that you want. Don't just go to one place and say, okay, I do or do not want to live here. Try to go to different countries and see if, you know, that's where you want to live. Maybe do a top three or a top five. You know, I know a lot of people are wanting to hurry up and leave America, but take your time. One of the things that I did like about Ghana is that of the currency, to me, the currency is more so in line of the US dollar, you know, so it, it's a whole lot easier for me to understand the currency here. Whereas I've been to Jamaica and I couldn't understand the currency at all. Um, I've had people talk to me in Thailand about the currency there and it's completely over my head. So that's also one of the things that you may want to consider as well is understanding the currency and making sure that that type of currency that you can wrap your head around and you can gain an understanding very quickly. It's been a crazy 12 months, right? We've gained a lot but also we have lost a lot. But in 2021, we should be pulling ourselves up by the bootstrap and we should start making some decisions on where we're gonna expect. Again, even if you don't wanna move here to Ghana or if you don't wanna move to Africa, start doing research and start doing plans on when you wanna move, how do you wanna move? Talk to family, talk to friends, Talk to people on Facebook, start absorbing as much as you can on where you want to live, where do you think it's best to live and go ahead and start creating that list now because you may not be able to move in 2021, but if you start creating a list now, then you know that that's the start of you expatting and leaving America. Thank you all for stopping by and coming to my channel. And as always, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hey y'all, click to look at my previous video and also to subscribe and get notifications of my journey.